Once again, thanks to Audible for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know, Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, supporting thousands of titles ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and self-development. There's so much to choose from, and giving it a go is as easy as downloading the free app on your phone or tablet. Members can even download titles and listen offline anytime and anywhere. Plus, they're yours to keep forever, even if you decide to cancel your subscription. As big as a music enthusiast as I am, there are times where I just want to listen to some spoken word-like podcasts or theatrical performances. I don't always have the time to sit and read books or graphic novels otherwise. Audible has me more than covered and lets me get some auditory enjoyment while I also work on other things. Something like Lewis Black and his rant is due special, one of my favorite comedians of all time like I mentioned before. Or in these times of self-isolation and uncertainty, there's no better time than now to consider trying out all these meditation and fitness programs that Audible offers free for members. Stuff to help me sleep better because I certainly need that, things to keep me motivated while working out, and other routines that's much better on my ears than my younger brother who is clearly in much better shape than I am. You can get started on your membership today by visiting the link in the description below, audible.com slash johnny, or you can text the word johnny to 500, 500 Again, Audible has a lot to offer you. You're bound to find something to pop into your ears. So consider signing up for Audible today and fill your time with a wide selection of audiobooks and then some. First off, I want to thank Capcom for supplying me with the review code for this video. Much love to the guys behind the scenes. And since this is a new entry in the series, uh, technically speaking, I'm going to put a big old spoiler warning here. Don't watch this if you're considering getting the game for yourself. Go get the game, play it, or wait for a discount. All good now? Okay, let's continue. Resident Evil 3 Remake is here, and I was damn excited for this one. Not to the extent of last year's remake of Resident Evil 2, but given that the developers have been knocking it out of the park when it comes to revamping old Resident Evil games, there was something to look forward to. But yes, it's just been a little over a year since Resident Evil 2 Remake dropped, and later that year, we get news that the third game was already on the way. And I thought Resident Evil 0 had a fast turnover. But as was the case for that game, and the original incarnation of Resident Evil 3, there was a second team working on this one, led by series veteran Kiyohiko Sakata, chief programmer of the original three and Resident Evil 4. Grabbing yourself a copy of this is technically a two-for-one deal. You're not just getting Resident Evil 3, you're also getting Resident Evil Resistance, an online asymmetrical multiplayer game that places you in control of one of these unlucky survivors or the mastermind looking to make the lives of these kids utter hell. I wanted to cover this game first real quick, and I mean really quick because I ended up not spending much time on this. You probably know the deal when it comes to these. You can choose to be a survivor or the mastermind and both have their own separate objectives. Survivors have to band together and clear three different areas on the map under a strict time limit, using their unique quirks to fight off enemy hordes and disabling all the nasty traps the mastermind can place in their pathway. If you end up wandering around too much or find yourself dying a lot, you lose a bunch of time leading to an easy game over. Proper teamwork and coordination are key to winning a match, which is asking for a lot when you're grouping with a bunch of randoms, but victory is still possible. I did manage to win a couple as a survivor, just a couple. Look at these guys, have you ever seen a more generic lineup of doomed protagonists? Gotta give it to Tyrone though, this motherfucker is a savage with melee weapons and ended up being my favorite of the bunch on the off chance that I got to pick them. You're not allowed doubles for gameplay sessions, meaning if someone else picks your favorite character before you do, you're shit out of luck. This also means you can't increase that player's rank to increase their skill sets and such because experience and other things that you earn from completing the match isn't shared between characters. I had several sessions that ended prematurely because one person will pick a character and someone else in the room left, probably because they couldn't get first dibs. As for the mastermind, your job is to fuck with the survivors. You keep tabs on them via these cameras and place all manners of traps directly in their way. Zombies, dogs, landmines, cameras with guns, and when it's ready to go, you can even send out a specific super boss. It depends on the character you pick, but it could be something like Mr. X or the mutated William Birkin. You can let these things run amok on their own, or you can directly control them yourself and get a little more accuracy. This game seems to lean on Mastermind a little too much in terms of balance. It can feel borderline unfair at times, especially when you're dealing with someone who's got the map completely memorized. Meanwhile, you're out here with a bunch of others fumbling through mechanics and latency, putting you at many disadvantages both in-game and out. 
Mastermind can be deviously fun, and you know what? From what I played in the tutorial and practice mode, I can see this being a good time in an actual multiplayer session. Maybe one day I'll get to experience that when these mastermind cues actually pop, because fuck me. Folks, I tried, I really did, but mastermind was impossible to queue for. Survivor sessions took about two, maybe three minutes to find a match, but mastermind never popped. I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, I'm sure with enough dedicated friends, you can set up a proper session, but matchmaking online is wildly inconsistent and you know i just didn't feel like investing any more time in it given the amount of time i wasted on it Resistance is one of those games that you keep on playing to score more points. You increase your rank, your deck got your characters more perks and cosmetic changes, also that you can have an easier time in the next round. It's very routine, nothing inherently wrong with it. I didn't hate the time I spent playing as a survivor. The latency can make things sluggish, especially if the Mastermind's connection is on the low side, but you know, survivors function like previous over-the-shoulder Resident Evils, and I didn't have much issue in terms of control and functions. But given the limitations I mentioned concerning picking your favorite survivors and getting first dibs, not to mention the other half of the coin being next to impossible to experience without dedicated friends, and you have a game that, in my eyes, has an extraordinarily short shelf life. It has just a wee bit more substance than the standard mercenaries mode you might be familiar with in previous Resident Evil games, and you're not really paying for the game if you're buying Resident Evil 3 new. Uh, that said, you can't purchase this game individually. You need a new copy of Resident Evil 3 to even play this, so if you get this game used, you're not playing it. Yeah. But I don't think you're missing out on much. With friends, it could be a fun time sink, but online matchmaking, a complete mess. You can skip this. That was probably what some of you were expecting me to say, but, but with a little more polish and much better online matchmaking, I can see reason enough to go back and give it another shot. Especially with my Twitch audience, resistance can be a fun thing for some nights, I think. Or at least folks can enjoy watching me get my ass spread apart. Nah, Resident Evil 3 was what I was really looking forward to, so let's jump into that. Jill Valentine is back in action to a time before she was a mind-controlled Nina Williams from Tekken. She is just an officer of stars here, dealing with the aftermath of a zombie outbreak, finding herself in another outbreak, and practicing bad habits like leaving the water running in the bathroom while taking a nap and making toast and never eating it. Resident Evil 3 Remake sets out to do what last year's remake did for Resident Evil 2, so does it succeed? In my eyes, yes. With flying colors, I think. This is a great rendition of Resident Evil 3, but it does have some faults. Not much to really say about the story, it's about the same as last time, but the writing and overall presentation, uh, needless to say, I feel is so much better. Jill and Carlos got the best of it. They still don't get to spend much time together given how the story plays out, but they have some of the best dialogue, the best interactions. Both are an absolute joy to the ears. I love this iteration of Jill because she definitely comes off as someone who survived one outbreak, she's hardened by the experience, her superiors in the police force don't listen to a word she says. She's got a lot of fire in her. Bitch can't even swim. She still suffers from nightmares because of the mansion incident and has a few vulnerabilities because of it, but when push comes to shove, she is no nonsense, and I love it. This remake even made me feel a little for Brad. What was originally a chicken shit of a character that was a glorified punching bag is now someone who tries his best to hang tough and look out for Jill before ultimately meeting his demise. I mean, I'm still gonna pop a cap in him, I want that key card, but I had a bit of regret this time. Carlos, damn, talk about a 180. I didn't think much of him at all previously, but here he's a dorky, lovable mess of hair that still tries to woo Jill on occasion, but doesn't overstay his welcome. He's more level-headed and is quick to realize what's more important in this dire situation. I really want another game with this version of the dude. You hear that, Steve? Yeah, Steve's dead. The other guys like Mikhail and the other members of the UBCS don't get much more to them. They're around the same as last time. Well, Tyrell gets a little more love instead of getting blown up like a chump in the original game. I liked him, even if he was obviously marked for death. I think this Nikolai is a little more devious, definitely more over the top than before, but he's still about as one note. He's got the cosmetic upgrade, but not much else. There's no denying that the revamped control scheme that was incorporated into Resident Evil 2 Remake works wonders for Jill's scenario in this game. Ultra responsive analog controls, not a tank to be seen anywhere, they feel remarkably good. The dodge mechanic that was pretty awkward to pull off consistently in the original game has been retooled so that it's much easier to execute, giving you an excellent means of dodging incoming attacks. That said, you still have to time it just right because you're not invincible when you use it, unless you manage to do a perfect dodge, which is not always easy to do given the varying circumstances like crowded rooms or narrow corridors. Still, when you dodge an attack just in time, you even get this little bullet time sequence that follows immediately after, so you get that perfect headshot. Mm, mm, mm. One of the most gratifying things you can do in this game. 
Resident Evil 3 was already more action-oriented than its predecessor, but this game is fucking breakneck in terms of pacing. With the exception to save rooms for momentary respites, this game doesn't give you much time to breathe. Though thankfully, the city is nowhere near as claustrophobic as before, and the over-the-shoulder camera, along with the map system from last time that marks items and important tools for later revisits, makes navigation ten times easier to manage here. The city is still an utter hellscape, and it's dour as fuck, but it is bursting with detail and filled with a ton of fun references to other Capcom properties. I love it when developers do stuff like this, and I uh, kind of wish the characters reacted to it. Like, what does Jill think of Skullstalker and when the series sold out and moved away from the Mars subplot? It is a little weird that the classic lockpick is now an item you have to actively carry, and considering you run into these simple locks all over the place, this thing never left my inventory until its last use. Opening these up, though, was an awesome reward for exploration. Every time I caught eye on these, I was like, ooh, come to mama. Except for when I ran into them as Carlos, because then I'm like, oh, fuck, I gotta come back here as Jill. And there's these hunters all over the place. Can we talk about the hunters here for a second? Is there anything to signify when they instantly kill you or not? I swear, even at full health, one measly swipe was enough to put me down. I do not get this at all. I mean, I love the redesigns, especially with the gammas and the sewers. These are so cool looking, but these frustrating. My total death count at the end was around five, and four of those were because of these assholes. The other was the giant toy head. The linear story progression and cinematic moments keep you on your toes on a constant basis. The plot may be the same, but there's a significant increase in story beats that forces you into a high intensity scenario lickety split, mainly when Nemesis shows up and puts you on the spot. Okay, so I'm of two minds when it comes to Nemesis. I love the makeover, I love his look, he has the same menacing presence as before and it's been amplified thanks to this game's revamped structure and presentation. I love the moment when he just pops in, grabs you by the head and tosses you to the side and when you regain your composure, you're met with a fucking flamethrower right to your face. That was such a great oh shit moment. I had that feeling a lot through the game, though it did get to a point where I questioned why Nemesis just didn't simply finish the job when he has more than enough opportunities to do so. I'm familiar with shitting on company's time, but you know, this seems a little more urgent. Do your job, Nemesis, wasting taxpayers' money. When it's time to buckle down and face the music, he's a force to be reckoned with. He's incredibly aggressive with physical assaults, he will once again run towards your ass if you try to get away, and now you can even get the jump on you and immediately block your pathway. Even with the retooled dodge mechanic, encountering Nemesis is still a make or break part of the journey, though you are still rewarded with upgrades to your weapons if you manage to get the drop on him. I was pleasantly surprised to see that mechanic retained. However, if you were to ask me how all of this compares to Mr. X from the last remake, it isn't as terrifying. Nemesis is essentially the same as he was in the original game. He would start roaming previously explored areas once you made enough progression in the story, and that's still the case here. There's never a point where Nemesis could potentially pop into the area if you wander around too much, unlike Mr. X in the last game, who was always on the lookout for you, signified by those looming footsteps. I was expecting Nemesis to at least be as persistent like that, only, you know, with more rocket launchers and shit, but no, he's still relatively confined to certain parts of the game, and around the second part of it, he's relegated to boss encounters only. Now, those boss fights are fucking spectacular, the best moments of the game, especially when you got controls and mechanics down pat, but I feel the game didn't take full advantage of making Nemesis a revamped Mr. X on steroids, which is so strange to say, because that's what he was in the original game. But when they raised the bar with Mr. X in the remake, I expected Nemesis to follow suit, and that's not what we have here. Certainly, he's more involved than what he was beforehand as far as directly encountering him goes, but it could have been so much more. Maybe it's a different case in the game's higher difficulties, though. For this review, I only played on the standard difficulty, you know, I thought the journey was pretty comfortable. There's more than enough ammo to go around, and there's a healthy variety of weapons to go about, including that sexy grenade launcher. They got rid of the mixing tool for this iteration though, and yeah, I, I did find the idea of having to make your own ammo a little cumbersome, considering that all those gunpowders were separate items and you had to practice a ton of item management to get the most out of it. Utilizing it correctly to make an obscene amount of powerful ammo for your shotgun or grenade launcher was great to experience nevertheless. This remake makes it a little more vanilla to make it more consistent with Resident Evil 2, and it doesn't stop there. They got rid of the quick time events for when you're put in a pinch that can alter your current route. There's maybe one or two moments that require button presses, but it doesn't change how you approach the next area. The roguelike elements like item placement and which types of enemies you encounter at what times has been removed, and some areas like the clock tower and parkway are either significantly shrunken down or completely scrapped. 
Again, it's more consistent with the remake of Resident Evil 2, but it does strip the game of some of its original identity, and that might rub you the wrong way if you really love the PS1 game. I have to admit, for as much as I absolutely loved playing this, it was strange seeing the absence of some of those elements. And compared to the original, the puzzles have been watered down, much to my discharging. I really liked those in the original game. Because of all this, I still think there's plenty of merit in playing the original, just as I thought there was still reason to play the original RE2, even after playing the remake. But if you had to choose one, if you could only choose one, then you get the remake. Though I feel you should be warned. If you've never played Resident Evil 3, well, this game does more than enough in upping the ante, but structurally, it's still Resident Evil 3. And compared to other games, it's one of the shortest games in the series. Jill's the only character here, with Carlos spliced in a couple of times for brief intervals. And her campaign takes about as long as Leon or Claire's scenario did in the last game. It's about a six to seven hour journey. And for 60 bucks, that might be a bit much to swallow, but I think it's still worth the price. And while the remake removed the roguelike elements, replayability is still heavily encouraged thanks to the different difficulties and this shop you unlock after completing the game once. As you play the game, you'll start completing these challenges, rewarding you currency you can spend on this shop, and there's a lot to pick from here, like Jill's original Star's outfit for future playthroughs, fuck yes. The costumes immediately available are severely lacking at the moment though, and I hope this is rectified in DLC, especially considering the amount of costumes that were immediately available in the Resident Evil 2 remake, deluxe edition or otherwise, and considering the amount of costumes the original game had. There's still time Capcom, make this outfit a reality please. But anyway, as for the other items, let's see, what's this one, the hot dogger? What the, that's the 1000 degree knife, what the hell, a little late to the punch there Capcom. Oh, let's see, there are these items that help regenerate health or increase defense and attack as long as you have them in your inventory. There are permanent inventory upgrades, sweet Jesus. That's incredible. And there's even weapons with infinite ammo. Ooh, I feel like Leon with the Chicago typewriter again. This is so fun. Great for speedrunning and getting better completion ranks. This is a game I know I'm gonna be revisiting a lot because yeah, it's short. Yeah, it could have been a little more with some ideas. And yeah, it did remove some things from the PS1 game. But we're still talking about an incredibly streamlined game that goes by so fast because of the amount of fun you can have. Raccoon City is not a pain to explore, the boss fights are absolutely incredible, and the new set pieces are damn sure to put a smile on your face. I don't want to give too much away, especially for the late game stuff, but Resident Evil 3 Remake is a keeper. But you know what, I, I kind of want the next game in the lineup now. If they're going to continue remaking past games, then you know, remake Code Veronica because I think that game could really benefit from it, and then just stop. I know they probably won't, that's just how this business is. <laughs> But I want to see more of Resident Evil's future, rather than, you know, overly romanticizing the past. These are great games, make no mistake. But I think it's time we finally start focusing on Resident Evil 8 and beyond. Well, I say that, but as for this Resident Evil marathon, uh, we kind of got to go back to the past in a manner of speaking, because next time we're looking at Resident Evil 4. Looked at Resident Evil 3, then we have to go back to look at Resident Evil 4.